Good afternoon. Welcome to the Greenleaf Financial Fitness Series, 20 Minutes to a Healthier, Wealthier You. Today we're going to be talking about life insurance. We also have a guest with us, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy with Quotacy. We're going to show everybody how to get into the presentation through GoPlan 101. So if they want to pull this up themselves, pull up the slides, they're able to do that. If you go in as an individual and go into resources and then uh, view presentation, you also get a, a, a recording sent to you via email. So let's let's in, do a little introduction here. Uh, here with me today, is, as usual, is Jim Hiles. Jim is the managing partner with First Capital Advisors Group. I'm Jim D. I'm a financial advisor and coach with Greenleaf Financial. And today's guest, as I mentioned, is Jeremy Hallett. Jeremy is the CEO of Quotacy. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. So hey, hey. we thought we'd throw a little, uh, you know, lighthearted humor here. Uh, this, this insurance salesman selling the policy tells the, tells his customer it's, it's a very good policy. In fact, he's uh, got one himself and he's so uh, he feels quite excited about dying. It's such a good policy. So that's probably the last time we'll get even a remote chuckle in a life insurance presentation. If we got that, <laughs> I don't know if we got that. Or not. That's killing me. <laughs> that joke, that joke, will, joke will kill. Hopefully you're insured. That's the worst joke I've ever heard. <laughs> so just some quick insurance the facts and stats. We'll go through these really quickly. 54% of Americans are covered by life insurance, which means a lot are not. 50% uh, of people overestimate the cost of term life insurance, which we think is a very important stat. Millennials overestimate the cost by over 200%. And another thing to point out is the average premium for a male rises over 250% between ages 25 and 50. So a reason to consider not waiting. Uh, obviously, gender, age, smoking status, health, medical history, um, and, and, and other things impact the rates you're going to pay. A man's average premium is about 12% more per month than a woman's. That's normal. And the number of consumers who prefer internet sales for life insurance, uh, which is another uh, plug for Jeremy coming up, increased from uh, 17% in 2011 to 29% in 2020. Jim so, Miles, why don't you yeah. tell us about the, the different phases okay, of life and how. Okay, let's do this. So, yeah, I, it, everyone has different reasons for different financial tools. Today's tool is, is life insurance specifically, and what you're essentially trying to do is, is do risk management. What's the risk? The risk is you die prematurely. When I ask anyone whether or not they've died too late, they've never responded. So <laughs> I don't think that's really an issue. Second, second but, joke. But if, but if you, yeah, exactly, we're on a roll. So, but if you think about it, I mean, you have these phases of life. You're trying to make money. You're trying to save money, accumulate money. That's like kind of phase one. So your your needs there are going to be different. You might actually use life insurance to help you accumulate. Should something happen to you, there might be dollars available for people to continue on with their lives. The, another way to look at insurance is actually in the what we call the distribution phase, which is retirement. And how do I protect my retirement if I don't have enough assets or whatever? Maybe I should be using insurance type products to help protect that for the people I care about. And the last one is, do you want to leave an estate? Do you want to create an estate? Do you want to do something with a legacy plan in mind? And these are the basic needs of life insurance. And it happens really, you can, there are different reasons for life insurance all throughout life. And this just gives you an idea of kind of how you can look at it. When you look at insurance, which ties right into this, yeah, what so you just said. What are you trying to do? I mean, it, let's get right into it. Well, you need insurance because if you die, you have to pay, you should pay off your debts or somebody else will have to. So it's a good way to do that. Obviously, if, if uh, one is working and bringing the income or both are working and bringing the income, you still need to replace the lost income for a spouse or family member who's generating that income to allow the kind of life that they want the people left behind to live. And that, that plays in, I just want to point out, that plays into people who are retired because in a married couple situation, you lose social security of the spouse who died, or you lose the lower of the two, right? So you're probably going to have some income to replace. That's right. And unfortunately, uh, sometimes there's an illness which draws down the dollars. I mean, in other words, you're spending all this money during life on medical insurance and you know, there are no assets left for any estate planning to give to anybody in the end. And of course, you know, final expenses and just creating an asset or an estate that you can provide to your beneficiaries the way you want to. So those are some basic reasons for life insurance. We're going to cover this just briefly today because it's a very different and deep subject than what we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be focusing on term life insurance primarily today. 
We're going to be spending a whole other section on what whole life is. You can see that there are different names, and it's chock full of fun jargon to learn on a Sunday morning. Spend some time on this with your kids. It's a lot of fun to talk about life insurance. So we will do this at one point. And if you have questions about what these are, certainly feel free to drop us a line. But the focus today, just because of the time frame, we'd like to deal with these in 20 minutes, is going to be pretty much on term insurance. So this might be a good time to bring Jeremy into the conversation. Jeremy, you're obviously an expert in all types of life insurance. You want to just start giving us uh, some of the key features of term insurance? Sure. Term insurance. Thanks, Jim. That's a great, great talk. I, I won't subject everyone to an insurance joke. Um, <laughs> you guys are. So, so term life insurance, obviously, it's, it, it typically works as we have it right here. You know, we, we got the basic and affordable piece, but life, term life insurance is actually very inexpensive. We see it being used for actually mainly in that beginning uh, uh, slide that we talked about with uh, the grow period. But grow period, obviously, is in, during that time from... Um, you know, from the from when you get married and where you're at, it's actually a great slide on this. And it's really that accumulation while you're growing your money. Um, we did a study with people who bought. We have about twenty thousand people who bought through Quotacy. Eighty-five percent of the people buying life insurance with us uh, tend to have a family of some kind. Typically, that means a partner and children, and that's in the grow phase, right? And so that's where this this it's and life insurance becomes very inexpensive in this zone. Um, you can choose for how many years you want to go out. So it might be, you know, a 10 year plan, a 20 year plan, a 30 year plan, depending on how long you believe you believe you need that insurance. And the things that cause people to when they actually buy this tend to come around, you know, it's when you're buying a home uh, or refinancing. And when you're getting married is a time to think about it. Getting divorced is, a, you know, thinking of opposite of that. You got having a baby or children in your life is when you're starting to see how responsible it is to make sure that if you were, should you die, prematurely uh, that they're taken care of. Um, caring for agent parents, we see that as well, or for you know a disabled child or nephew or niece if you're taking care of them. Starting a business can be a big one. A lot of, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs tend to invest everything they can into starting their business up and running. And if they were to, you know, if they were to pass on before their business got up and running, they could leave their whole family with a, well, with a hole, a financial hole. Sending your kids to college is, tends to be one we see this done pretty well. And then obviously also in these empty nesters in that, you know, called that 50 to 65 zone, still do need insurance because we're building up enough retirement income. And if we weren't there to be putting our money away, uh, will our spouse retire the way that we would really expect them to? Um, but that's, there's this term period where you've got, call it that 10, 20, 30 years of, of, of pricing where the cost will never go up with term insurance. So you'd say you buy a million uh, and it's, a, you know, $80 a month that price will never change in that 20 year term period. So that, that's where we see a lot of people tending to buy in. That price stays the same. Um, you know, the example here, right, Sarah buys a 15, level, 15 year level term for half a million. That price that Sarah is gonna pay is guaranteed. Uh, it matters also, and I'll, I'll take a breath here, it matters when we, uh, it matters which carriers we go to. There's call it 10, 20 really good carriers out there that sell life insurance. I won't get deep into why you would want to buy from one of these, but based on your health scenario, so if you've got, um, you know, if you've, if you've been diagnosed with type two diabetes, or you've had a DUI, or you're on antidepressants, or you're in your third trimester of pregnancy, you name it, there's a, all the different carriers take a look at how you are, both lifestyle and health, and make a determination on that price. And so you want to make sure that you shop the entire market when you're going out and looking to buy one of these policies. Great. And then, well, let's, let's, uh, what's the word of the day? Unpack that a little bit. So we're going to unpack that a little bit. And there's a lot going on in, on the slide and what you just said. So just to kind of go through some of it, you know, the questions we often get is how long a term should I buy? And, and I, the, the answer to what I've seen is it depends what you're buying insurance for in the first place. Sure. So, you know, you can actually buy it for a specific term. Like if you got a 30 year mortgage, maybe you buy a 30 year insurance. But you know, that, that might not go well because frankly, in a 30 year mortgage, you're actually paying down your principal so that it may not appear to be as simple on the front, on the face as to how much insurance you should have and for how long. So we're gonna take a look at a calculator that you guys can, to, can use on this. And we're, we're gonna to jump to the uh, Quota C site, which is embedded in GoPlan. But before I do that, just one more thing to be aware of, because I've seen this happen recently to me. And, and Jeremy certainly chime in on this. So what happens at the end of the term? What, what are my choices? Mm -hmm. 
does it just go away? Can I continue it? What if I really needed them because then I'm sick? What is happening? What, what's the scenario you've seen there? Uh, it's a really great question, and that actually matters. Yeah, uh, that's called conversion. You've got it right. It's right here on the bottom of the screen here. But um, most of the most of the carriers that we all know the names of, not the newer ones that have been coming out, but the ones that we know, the, the Prudentials, the AIGs, the uh, you name it, the Lincoln Financials, the John Hancocks, all these types of companies have a pro, have a something called conversion option, which means before the end of the term period, if, if you want to turn it into a permanent plan, you can, which means you can keep your coverage after the term insurance is over. And why you would want to do this is if you're I'm, I'm 47, so if I buy a 15-year term insurance plan, when I'm 61 slash 62 and my term is about to be over, if I've been had a heart attack or I've been diagnosed with cancer and I want to make sure my family's okay, it, it will cost a bunch, but I'll, I'll be able to turn that into a permanent plan, and you know, if I have a five or 10-year life expectancy, I can make sure that my family gets that coverage. Uh, that is a really big deal. There actually is a lot of products being sold in the market today that don't have a conversion option. Most of those, I won't name any of them, but they're insurance companies that are out there in the, uh, you know, advertising to everybody right now on television and whatnot. They're not names that you would know. My suggestion would be, uh, and last on conversion, most of us don't know how to look forward 15 or 20 years. That's a long time in the future. And we don't think that that'll be valuable. We think 20 years from now is enough coverage, but I don't know why you wouldn't pay the same price or even less to have that option because the one to two percent of people who need it are extremely happy or at least their families are better taken care of because they purchased a plan that had a conversion option yeah and and you raised a couple of points there one one is that hey why don't i just buy when i'm 62 you know if i need more then well as <laughs> right. just, yeah just jeremy this alluded to what if you if this matters i mean your health is going to be a very important reason whether or not you can even get the stuff. And sometimes the insurance companies are looking at it in such a way where they're trying to insure a large number of people to cover their risk, but they're looking at your health and they will price you on your health. And sometimes the health gets too risky, the scenario is too risky for them to even want to give you insurance. And, and that happens. I mean, you, people will get declined. You can't just go buy the stuff because you want to buy it. It does depend on your personal health situation. And there will be at some point in the process questions, certainly on the application about your health status. In some situations, you'll have to see or take some small medical tests. In some situations, you might have to see a doctor or share your doctor records. So these are the things that the insurance company collects to price out a product, price out the, the terms, if you will, of your insurance to determine whether or not it makes financial sense for you. And that's called underwriting. We don't have a slide on that specifically per se, but everyone should, if you're trying trying for insurance, you what happens is you're really looking to get an offer back from an insurance company. In other words, you apply for the insurance, you don't just buy it. You apply for the insurance and they offer you something back. That is what happens in life insurance. A little bit different buying experience than just going out there and buying a lot of other financial products. So Jer Jeremy, and, and you, I, 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 I just, I was just gonna say on that one that the best time to buy it is the best time to get your coverage lasts as long as when you're, you know, when you're young. Uh, you know, today is the youngest you'll ever be. So if 10 years ago, we also work with a lot of people we see who bought a 20 year, 20 years of coverage 10 years ago when they had a four and a six year old. Now they're 14 and 16, but they realize they still need coverage beyond the 10 more years that are left. If you're still healthy today, now is the time to make sure that you extend your coverage as well from a pricing perspective. It's very important. That's a great point, Jeremy. And the other questions, I, I had a question, then we have another question that, that we had someone uh, send in. But if, if um, what, the question somebody sent in is, if I have, I already have insurance through work, do I still yeah. need, should I still consider buying it? Because that's, a, that's a, a comment that we hear a lot from people. You should, uh, work coverage is a magical thing. Thank you our, for our employers. It's also very inexpensive. That There's a reason it's inexpensive. That coverage lasts until you're no longer working in your company. So if your company is giving you one or two times your salary, which I would argue was not enough to take care of your family, but even saying that you thought it was, if you get in an accident in your car and you die immediately, your work coverage pays out, that's fantastic. If you get diagnosed with cancer, and I won't get into a story about what happened to one of my neighbors, but you know, if, if you get diagnosed with cancer and it takes 
you have to keep working while you go through all your cancer. And if you die and your fa- die with, you know, tragically young, if you're not working, that coverage doesn't pay out. So you should always have what we call a portable plan, which is your own plan that you own. And so that your family's okay in case you don't die immediately, which most of us don't. Right. So the, the coverage from an employer should probably be looked at as kind of um, extra. icing on the cake. Extra, right. Icing you know, there's, on the cake. Uh, there's another small point that when you get into this stuff a little bit, the employer plans are based on what they call a group you know, number. Sometimes they, they're even called, back in the old days, we used to call it unisex. They would take a, a whole group, no matter what sex and age, and they take all their medical history and they kind of average together. So in some situations, right. the group rate for the whole group if you are healthy, you are, could get insurance for the same amount at a lower price. Right, right. So you, there are a couple of different reasons to try out your group insurance work. I would say that most people should absolutely get as much as they can and have affordable policy on the side. That's good. And the yeah. other question I had, Jeremy, that I thought maybe we should talk about is, is you mentioned conversion, ma- making sure or at least considering policy that offers the ability to convert. And can can you explain that? Is it is it convertible? at the same uh, death benefit? Is it convertible at the same premium or, or one or the other? Uh, I'm certainly not both. No, it's a great question. So let's just say you have a million million dollar plan. You can convert anything up to a million. It will be, the pricing will be based on your age at the time of conversion. So in the future, you'll be older. That's when you convert. And it'll also be to a permanent plan. So we the price might be 10, 15, 20 times what you're currently paying at the time of conversion, which is why people wait till they're, you know, the end of the term period if they're going to convert. And it's also a permanent plan, which will be there when you actually die for sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you're paying, so yes, it'll be more expensive, but you can convert up to the amount that you bought originally and you don't have to go through any underwriting. They can't change anything on you, but they can charge you more obviously for a permanent plan than you would for a term. Of co- Right. Of course. Okay. Let's shift gears. We're going to go to GoPlan and just take a, a quick look at some of the calculator, the tools we have in here. We're, we're in GoPlan under software. You, you can find the, the financial tools in here, and you can just scroll down. You'll find a life insurance calculator. This is probably where a lot of people should start. It pulls Vodacy, which is Jeremy's company, uh, right up in terms of you know how much do I need. So if you were to walk through this thing, and, and I'll just put some numbers in here just to demonstrate how it works, but Let's say $100,000, let's pick a number. Um, how many years of income would be need to place for your family to be financially secure? Jeremy, is there a number in here that is typical? I like 10. I think that seems to be the most uh, common number, but um, it, it kind of, yes, I, that's typically the way it is. Okay. And let's say, uh, oh, uh, 250 on the mortgage, give or take. So just I got uh, fifteen thousand dollars of other credit card and things like that. Uh, so I can, I, if I have kids, I can help cover their education here. Is that correct? That is. So I, I kind of. So this we're gonna go through this whole thing. The sim. I like simple. Ten okay. times whatever you make from a gross salary tends to work out as a nice number. And if you're gonna protect your kids in college, this actually uses some numbers for colleges. You know, average numbers for colleges. But. Um, you know, in that 13 to 15 year growth, that simple way if you want your kids covered for college. Okay. College right. college. So if I just click no here and then how much money, Barry? I mean, I don't know. So how much do I have in savings and investments? Say I've got, is this good like 401k and everything else? That'd be right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's say I've got uh, between my wife and I, we have 250,000 all told. How much life insurance do I have to plan on keeping? So would, would my group term insurance go in here or no? It would. I, I would suggest putting it in. I mean, if we're not looking at over, you know, uh, I would, you know, I would put my hundred thousand in there. Yep. So I got one times with my group. So that means this is suggesting nine fifty, around a million dollars of insurance, kind of based on these numbers. And you which gets me right into my to keep it simple. It's ten times your gross income, right? Pretty, I mean, that's, that's, that's just, it's pretty that close. Works. That works. So you know, once I figure out my potential need, then you go back and play the numbers that anyone can here. It's a calculator. So you say, okay, well, sure. what about this is, so what does it cost me? And so what are we seeing here, Jeremy, as I kind of go through this, I'm just going to put some sample stuff in here. 
So, so we go through this. This is a very, this is a very simple, basic quote. So we'll ask for your zip code, which helps know which state you're in. Uh, your birth date is obviously very important for the pricing of your life insurance and your gender, as we talked about. And then smoking status does matter. Um, you know, most more, more people are non-smokers today than smokers. Uh, that brings us up into the states, which allows us to play with that coverage amount. That's at 950, but you can move that 950 to anything you want to. So let's uh, kind of like, the I, like, I like round numbers, so I'm just going to put that up. So you just slide it anywhere. Right you want. Okay. And then, and, this, you know, and then Alphos, what do you do with this? That same thing. So that we were making, since you put in 1960 on that one, we're assuming that you're, you know, 60 years old, 61 years old. So we would have moved you to a 15 year term. Um, you know, what's the coverage for? And I would argue it maybe at this point for you, you're doing it to make sure that you finish up your retirement bucket for your spouse. Okay. Maybe even a 10 year term for you in this quote would be probably pretty good, but you can move okay. it around. So just move that 15 to a 10, just slide that to a 10. You'll see where the price really should okay. drop Let's on that. Let's go a little longer. Let's go a little longer. There you go. So I wanted, I'm, I put in 55, so that's my current age is 55. So I go to 75. Right. right. Okay. I mean, so, so one thing I've noticed, Jeremy, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like back years ago when I first got my insurance uh, education, the, the term policies were way too expensive for 65, 70-year-old people. Has right. that changed quite a bit? So we, we used to put a newsletter out in 1999. I put a newsletter out to everybody about life insurance to insurance agents. because I've worked with a lot of advisors over the years. Uh, that... We, we just found it the other day, the paper we sent out and looked at term pricing and it's half, it's, it's gone down by 50% in the last 20 years based on our uh, newsletter that we were sending out. Yeah, that's that's amazing, right? So, I mean, I think a lot of people wow. are not aware of the fact that they should even be looking at term if they're 60 years old, but so, the truth of the matter is it's, so it's not that expensive. You know, the reasons for that are, are it's not because they're giving it away. It's because people are living Longevity. longer. And health is Long better. There, there, are, there are obvious reasons. There, there's no free lunch from insurance companies. Let's of course, like right? So, uh, no, I'm they're making here. money. Yeah, exactly. So, but you have to look at this slide again here. Going back through the customization of just getting your quote, blood pressure, make, tobacco, nicotine makes a difference. Your build makes a difference. Blood pressure right. med medication, cholesterol medication. I'm just putting some things in here to yep. show. Let's say we've got a yes with uh, cancer in this case. From my mother had cancer and let's say yes so that's going to have an effect on this in some way isn't it it can, it can. for sure it can. uh okay. depends on your age but yeah okay. in this scenario right. so now i'm going to get uh prices what, what do these prices mean i get the 273 a month i get, I get that part for a million dollars 20-year term payable monthly so that that's kind of what i would be doing is that what I'm going to get? Do I know? You know, is that really what I'm going to get? End up with? Yeah, probably. It's about somewhere right around sixty percent of the people actually get that rate. Why okay. did they? They don't get any cheaper rate. Uh, just be just, just transparent. It might be more. So I kind of use that example a little bit else elsewhere. As you go through this, and and we, I don't think we're going to go through it here today, but we actually have you sort of fill out an application where our team takes a look at all the health and lifestyle questions that you answer. Okay. And then I have an underwriter. We were talking about underwriting earlier. I have an underwriter on staff who will look over all the answers you give us. And then my team will shop all of that to all the different carriers out there to make sure we're getting you with the right carrier. And okay. why I say that is, for example, I'm in Minnesota. We get a few DUIs in Minnesota and Wisconsin around us here, right? I mean, people, a DUI you will you actually affect things are losing. <laughs> it happens, <laughs> but I mean, you know, or, 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 you know, diabetes can really affect it, or I'm on some heart medication or whatnot. We can get you coverage, but we want to make sure we shop you. So that is based on no health issues whatsoever or lifestyle issues, but you have no obligation to buy. And once you give us all this information, we will shop everything on your behalf and go to all the carriers and come back and tell you what we believe for sure the price will be, which we're right over 90% of the time at that point. Okay. So if you get, I just pushed, give me the lowest one, and it came to this. Yep, so I just, that's what you should do. So just keep going through the get, I obviously yeah. always support the lowest cost, so why not, right? So now I'm going to put why more not? information in here. Is this like filling out the application part? Is that what this is? It is, it and is. that just okay. takes about four to five minutes to fill out. Um, okay. No way to sort of, I mean, if you go through it and you just wanted to see what the questions are, you know, 
please use test. Um, or and if you want our team to shop you, put your name in there. We'll go all through all the work and um, okay. we'll go to all the insurance companies and find you the best rate. Okay. And then if it's different than what else. How, how does the communication work through you, for example? What sure. So I have I get, a. I get, I get to this point. I push these buttons. I'm like, okay. So are you going to call me or what, do, what happens? My team will reach out by phone. Uh, we do a, We also uh, work a lot through email with people. Our goal is to make sure we communicate with uh, the cl our clients the way they want to be communicated with. So, you know, sometimes a five-minute phone call, just knowing that we're all real people. We're here in the Midwest. We take care of you. But a lot of people want to do this by email at night, and we'll go back and forth that way. Um, but we, yeah, so our team will reach out, and then... You'll either do an online, you know, we'll also connect you with the carrier. We'll work with the carrier on your behalf. Underwriting now, this is, and this is kind of the last thing I know we're getting there. Uh, there's something called automated underwriting using big data for life insurance. So some people go right through. That means you're typically younger, typically in your 30s, I would say. And with no health issues or credit issues whatsoever. You could have problems in a few days, lots of time. As we get a little bit older, they might want to order our medical records from our doctors, and doctors are sort of busy right now, so getting medical records is harder than it used to be. You might need an exam. So that whole underwriting process might take anywhere between four and 10 weeks um, before the carrier will give you the final price and say, here's the coverage for you. Okay, so it could take a little time. One of the questions that we did get or, or that we've heard is, are your prices any different than any other online service that's out there or do I need to shop around or is this is this a fixed thing what's the story it's a great question so the pricings are the pricing is based on the insurance carrier and what they've told the uh, uh, the state regulator so it's regulated by the state okay. the price is the same if you bought Prudential through us or Prudential through someone down the street you're gonna pay the same price for Prudential so the reason to go through someone is make sure that whoever you're going through, if it's us, thank you. If not, you're welcome to use our stuff and learn about it. But if you go through us, make sure that whoever you work with is making sure is is working to get you to the right carrier, because whatever carrier you buy with, that will be the price no matter who you went with, including going direct to the insurance company. Great, that's good. That's good to know. We're going to go right through the end of this today because I think we're at time, but um, Jim, why don't you sum it up? Yeah, I mean, to sum it all up is basically, obviously, first and foremost, consider what your needs are, what what your current needs are, yeah. what your future needs might be. Um, try to understand the, the pros and cons of, of term versus whole life, which we didn't really cover. Um, but, you know, you, you can oftentimes people buy one or the other. Or they sometimes buy both because they like uh, they 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 see the need for a little bit of each. Um, getting quotes, obviously, quota C will help you with that. Um, you know, once you make the commitment, people who have been ha having this hanging over their heads for years, not really moving forward with it, always come back and tell us they feel better now that they have coverage that they thought they should have had for a while. So that's the end. Oh, this is our and then right. our appendix. Yeah. But this is where you want to go. With the, we're not. This is a yeah. puzzle for Sunday morning. <laughs> Through this. Well, thanks, Jeremy, for joining us today. We, it was, it was uh, nice information, good Thank presentation. You. Thank you for the sharing of your calculator and your knowledge there. And we hope all of you uh, can benefit from looking at life insurance to go to Go Plan 101 and find the life insurance calculator or go into the Quota C site. I want to thank you all for attending, and uh, we'll be on again in a month. Yep. Next Our next financial fitness webinar is Tuesday, September 14th, and we'll be talking about investing basics. So sounds like fun. Look for your invitation. And thanks for joining us today. Jeremy, thank you very much. Great job. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Have a great thank you everyone.